In this video, we're going to look at how I made my entry for the Mix and Game Jam 2020. The theme for the jam was mixing genres, so I mixed racing and RTS. The end result is a really interesting design that involves racing, base building, resources, ordering units, and so on. Let's begin! Okay, so let's check out how I made this game. It was a 48 hour game jam, so everything was fully built from scratch in that time frame. The total working time was about 22 hours out of those 48. In all that time, I wrote about 2000 lines of code, so it was definitely very intense. You can download the complete project files if you want to inspect all of the source code for yourself, or just go into the itch page to play the game. The jam started on a Friday at 6pm, and the theme was revealed in a video. The theme was mixing genres. So first of all, I started to think what genres could I mix, and for research I used the Steam text page, it's really useful with tons of genres. My first thought was actually making a platformer RTS, I thought that could be an interesting mix. But then I remembered that I had some car models that I got recently, and I hadn't done a racing game before, so I went with a racing RTS. Once I settled on the base idea, it was time for coming up with the design. Usually I like to design on paper, so that's exactly what I did, just grabbed a piece of paper and started writing. So here is my sort of game design document. As you can see, there's tons of questions and ideas for mechanics. I like to ask lots of questions and see where the design takes me. Since this is a game jam, certain things did not end up in the final game, like for example the idea for having multiple car types. So that could be an interesting addition. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on polishing up a game jam game. And after some time, I had a rough idea of the design that I wanted to implement. So something where the player controls a car, he can drive for resources, construct some buildings, build some units, and attack some enemies. With that settled, I opened up Unity in a completely empty project. The rules for the jam was that the code must be done completely during the jam, but assets can be used. So I took this opportunity to use a great asset pack that I got from an asset store bundle, tons of cars and racing assets, which was perfect for the design that I was going for. There's a link in the description for the asset pack that I use in case you want to check it out. And with that, the first task was to get the car actually moving, so this was quite tricky. The last car game that I made was all the way back when I was still using Flash, so I've never done a car game or car controller in Unity, so this was definitely a very interesting new task. It's at this point that I thought it was probably a mistake to go for a game jam with a genre that I've never made before. Since time is limited, you should really do things that you already know how to do. So it wasn't very smart of me to try a genre that I've never done before. But at the same time, game jams are all about experimentation and trying out new things, so going for something new is also in keeping with the spirit of the game jam. It was definitely very tricky to make the car controller, I didn't know whether to use physics or not, so I had to learn how the wheel collider works, which despite the name, it really isn't just a collider. The wheel collider already has a bunch of suspension and motors, so I spent tons of time trying to get that to work, learning about the wheel collider, how to make it move forward and turn, so it's a pretty complex thing, so stay tuned for a video on how to make a proper car controller. I still need to do some research on that. In the end, time was running out, so I opted to go for a much simpler car controller. It's just a rigid body moving forward and rotating, very simple. The car only works in the XZ plane, so it never goes up or down, never jumps and has no suspension, there's no tire sliding, no drifting, the car has perfect traction. So like I said, it's not a perfect car controller, it's very simple, but for the purposes of a game jam, it's definitely good enough. And that was pretty much all I did in the first night of the jam. I made the design and got the basic car controller working, and then I went to bed. Day 2, I woke up at my usual time nice and early and got to work on the car AI right away. This task seemed like it was going to be very difficult, but actually turned out to be relatively easy. And the main reason why it was easy is because I wrote the generic car driver script in a nice clean way. So the AI works on top of that. Both the player and the AI share the same underlying car driver script. The AI simply looks at where it's at, where it's going, calculates the angle towards the target position, and sends commands to the driver to move forward, backwards, or turn. This is also something that I will cover in a detailed video, so stay tuned for that. With the car working, I started making the truck resource gatherer unit. Again, functionally, it's the same as a normal car, just a different type of AI that works on top of the same car driver script. Then I made a simple resource node, just a position in the world that spawns some prefabs for each resource object. The truck finds the closest resource, goes to it, grabs the resource, then looks for the closest outpost building, goes to that, drops it, and repeats. So very simple logic. Then I built the second part of my design, which was the track. In terms of building, it was very simple thanks to the awesome track parts included in the asset pack that I was using. Again, there's a link in the description if you want to check it out. I just took all of the track pieces, enabled snapping, and started building an interesting track. I even had to make some modifications because one piece did not perfectly connect, 
and I easily made that using ProBuilder. That's Unity's built-in 3D modeling solution, which is very easy to use, and in a few seconds I had the track piece perfectly connecting with all the rest. And at this point, I also started live streaming the development. So a big thank you for joining me on this first testing live stream. I had no idea if it was going to go well or be a disaster, but thankfully it ended up quite well. I live streamed for about two hours, which was actually two very productive hours. My first task on the live stream was handling the scene machine cameras. Essentially, I wanted an over camera for the world and a behind the camera for the track. Doing that with scene machine is extremely easy. Just set up the two cameras and play around priority. Very simple. Next up, I handled the checkpoint system. I also have a dedicated video on this topic, so stay tuned. It's a pretty simple system. Just place some objects with trigger colliders and test the order that the player hits them. If they hit them in the right order, then everything is fine. Again, also very easy to implement. Then for a quick fix, since this is a game jam game where time is of the essence, that means there's no time to do a perfect implementation of some systems. For example, the car AI works great. The car goes towards whatever target position I give it, but there's no pathfinding anywhere. The car just moves forward and turns to reach the target. Meaning that if a solid object appears in front of the target, it just keeps jamming against it. So the simple hotfix that I added was to check if the car was stuck, and if so, apply a random rotation to it. With some rotation, then the car is pointing in a random direction, which means it can move forward, and the turn radius will likely be enough to avoid the obstacle. And here I also made a bug live on the stream, so that was interesting. I forgot to add a timer for the rotation, so the car was randomly rotating on every frame. So yeah, encountering bugs is definitely part of the process, it's just a simple fix and everything was working. Then for making the resource types, if you've seen my Builder Defender course, then this section was very familiar, using some nice scriptable objects to define all of the types and a simple resource manager with a dictionary to keep track of everything. Then for making the minimap, I already covered this in detail in another video. It's very simple, just add some sprites to each object and put them on a separate layer, then make a second camera that just renders that layer, make it render onto a texture and display it in the UI. Very simple. Also, in terms of how I organize the work that I need to do, usually I keep my progress on a simple physical to-do list. So just a piece of paper placed right next to me. Here I write whatever tasks I need to do and go ahead and tick the boxes as I do them. You can see I had tasks for the building manager, making the car AI, handling enemies and the minimap and so on. Then also making some music, sound and main menu and lastly submit to itch. You also see the specific tasks that I plan to do during the live stream. So it's a very simple to-do list and a very simple process and it's great for me for helping to keep track of what needs doing. Okay, so back into the game. Next, it was the building manager. Again, using scriptable objects for all of the building definitions. According to the design, there's the main HQ building, there's the outpost where the trucks drop resources, the shop that makes the vehicles, and the fuel station which interacts with the fuel system. Then for handling the unit types, Again, using scriptable objects, there's the cars, trucks, and enemies. Next up, for handling the construction of units in the shop, very easy to do, just add a simple timer and after some time it instantiates the prefab. Super easy to make some cars or trucks or just about anything. Then for the UI, this was the tricky thing. The game is meant to be a mix of racing and RTS, which is an interesting idea, but if you think about input, usually racing games are heavily controller based, whereas RTS games are more heavily mouse based. Switching inputs is always a bad idea, so I knew I didn't want the player to require the mouse. And since the UI is not mouse based, I also didn't want it to be positioned like a normal UI. So my solution was making a canvas on top of the player. It shows the correct UI based on proximity to the objects, and it works on button presses rather than mouse input. So it took a while, but I'm quite happy with how it came out. Works well, and I think it looks good too. Then for making the interesting fuel system, Based on my original design, I wasn't sure if I was going to implement some sort of health mechanic. I thought adding that would make the game a bit too intense and require micromanagement, which would be bad based on the controls. So instead I just added fuel. So the cars run around and they spend fuel. When they run out of fuel, they have to go to a fuel station. So functionally it works kind of like health and healing. The system is very simple, the cars have a float for the fuel amount, and when that goes under zero, they'll look for the closest fuel station and just go there. The HQ also works as a fuel station. Then making the UI for the player to construct some buildings. I use the same UI method that I used previously, so just a button to toggle the menu and it calls the building manager to construct the building. Next up, the car AI for finding and attacking enemies. I went with a very simple design, so this was easy to implement. The design is for the player to kill an enemy just by touching, so that's a simple collider trigger on the enemy. And for the car, I just have to place the move target directly on top of the enemy. And that's it, and everything works. 
Then since the cars could attack the enemies, it was time to be able to give them orders. For that, again, handling the interface was a bit tricky. The solution I came up with was holding down a button to expand the selection area, and when the player lets go, it selects all the cars within range. Then with the selected cars, I can press another button to give a move order and tell the cars to go there. So with that, the player now has control over the units. Then for handling the UI for the resources, the resource manager was implemented long before this, but until this point didn't have a visual, so just a simple UI visual. Next up, making the enemy spawner. This just has some simple logic to constantly spawn enemies up until a total maximum, and the spawner itself also has a health system and the cars prioritize the spawner over the enemies, so the cars first take down the spawner and then take down all the enemies. Then I needed some way of showing messages to the player, so I made the same thing that I did for the interface, just add another world canvas with nice red background and a text object, then a simple script to manage that with a nice singleton instance so it can be called from anywhere. With that I added the ability to be able to show messages like you're going too far or can't afford something. So speaking of affording, I then added some resource costs. I made a simple class to handle a resource amount, it just holds a resource type and an int amount, then some basic logic on the resource manager to see if the player can afford it. Next up, finally adding some sort of goal to the game. I thought about it for a while and since this is a game jam game, I went with the simplest goal possible of just clearing the map. So the player wins the game when they destroy all the spawners and all the enemies. And with it being a racing game, I also added a nice timer. Eventually, I wanted to be able to add an online high score table so you could compete with others to win the game faster, but suddenly I didn't have time for that. Then when the player wins the game, they go to a simple win screen. So it just displays some stats related to the game and a button to go back into the main menu. And speaking of that, I then made the main menu. Very basic, just the game name, the goals of the game and some buttons. Then for the final mechanic that I want to add, gathering resources from the track. This way the player has something to do rather than just waiting around for the trucks all the time. I simply added the resources to the checkpoints. So as the player goes through a checkpoint, it gathers one resource. Then I just added all of the checkpoints to the track, just duplicating and placing the same game objects all over. Next up, adding a simple visual for how many units are currently selected, and then adding a visual for when the player gives a move order. And with that, it was pretty much done. The game that I built here in such a short amount of time is actually quite a bit complex, which means that the one big task remaining was how do I teach the player how to play. The solution I came up with was adding a nice pointer that would guide the player throughout the various things they needed to do. So just a simple object placed flat on the ground with some basic math to rotate and point towards the target position. With that system in place, I simply made a tutorial script that handles all of the states that teaches the player how to play. So first it points into a resource node, then teaches how to teleport onto the track, then it teaches you how to play some buildings, make some cars and so on. So it's a simple system, but I think it works well. Then going into the polish stage, up until this point the visuals for the game were really just prototype visuals. So I polished up the terrain, added some flowers, grass and rocks, then polishing up the track with some more objects alongside it. Once again, adding all of them from the asset pack that I used, which is linked in the description. Then adding some trees, just placing a bunch of prefabs all over. Then polishing up the enemy spawner with some objects. For this one, I used another awesome low poly pack with tons of props. I'm usually not very good at decorating, but I think the final result looks pretty good. Same thing to polish the HQ and polishing the outpost and the fuel station. Then I made a basic logo. Took me a while to come up with an interesting name, so that's always a very difficult task. With that, I started to work on sound and music. Made some simple music with a program called Bosca CL or however you pronounce that. So that's a great free tool for making music. Then I used another one for making sound effects and just play them with various actions. Next, adding some particles when the enemy dies, then some smoke coming from the cars, added a simple day-night cycle, and lastly submitted to itch with just a few minutes left for the deadline. With that, the final game was made. So I'm really pleased with the final result. It's an interesting, unique design that I think plays pretty well. It was a bit too complex and feature rich for a game jam, so I didn't really have too much time for polishing, but I think all the mechanics work pretty well. Now I hadn't done a game jam in a long time, so this was an interesting experience. But at the same time, it kind of reminded me of why I don't normally do game jams. This was definitely a very stressful non-stop weekend. Out of the total 48 hours, I worked for about 22. In total, I wrote about 2000 lines of code, so it was pretty much just non-stop work and sleep. I'm happy with the result, but it's probably going to be another year before I do another one. 
Also, one thing that I asked during the live stream was if you would be interested in seeing how I would take a Game Jam game and polish it to the next level. The response was positive, so definitely stay tuned for that. I think that would make a great video since so many people participate in game jams, but then so few people take those ideas and flesh them out into a complete game. So make sure you hit the bell icon so you don't miss it. Alright, so that's it. Like I said, you can download the complete project files and inspect all of the source code for yourself, or just go into the itch page and download the executable to play it. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. Post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.